We're going to look at how to load the employees sample database into your MySQL server. Okay. I'm going to do it locally, but this works on any MySQL server. You can load this employee sample database. This is a very common sample database for somebody trying to practice SQL or MySQL in general. And it is really popular and a lot of people like to use it for practice. So I'm going to show you how to load it up. I also use the same database in my uh, SQL course. It's one of the databases I use. It's a really good database. It has a lot of features. So let's take a look at how to load it. And I'm going to show you both on a Windows and on a Mac. I'm going to do it both because it's really quick. Okay. So let's look at what the database looks like. First of all, just a quick look. This is my Windows machine. I'm going to switch back and forth between my Mac and my Windows. And uh, the database, the employees database is really popular because it has a lot of tables, a lot of data. It has one, two, three, four, five, six tables. And let's just run one real quick query. I'm, I'm connected to Workbench and you can see the data is there. So I'm going to drop this so I can reload it, right? Drop means basically deleting the whole uh, database. So the database is gone and I am going to reload the entire thing, the structure, including the data. Okay. So where you want to start is just by Googling employee sample database. Okay. And you'll, you'll get some, a bunch of ads, but most of, most likely the first one that's not an ad will be the one that's from MySQL itself. So go there and here, uh, try to read, you know, all the pages you can hit next to go to the next page. I'm just going to jump right into the installation. So in the installation section, it tells you to download it from GitHub and it has all the instructions on how to install it. So we're going to go through this process. What I found with this one is you have to use a CLI. There might be a complicated way of doing it in Workbench, but the CLI is the easier solution. I couldn't get it to work in Workbench. The other sample database, I already did a video on how to load Sakila database and World database. Those are very simple. And you can just do it in, in Workbench itself without actually using a CLI. But in this case, we are going to use a CLI. So the assumption is you already have the MySQL CLI available in your terminal. And I'll show you that I actually have it. And I'll link a video on how to set it up. If you, need, if you, if you need to know how to install the CLI, usually if you already have MySQL installed, you have the, CQ, the CLI with it. And I use, I use MAMP and MAMP has the CLI with it. Okay. So the way they're telling us is we got to download it. It's going to be a zip Unzip it, go into the folder and run this, uh, this command. It says MySQL dash T the, the T is basically run tests. You don't really have to do it. And then this MySQL file that you actually downloaded. Now, this is a little tricky because they're assuming you're not, you're using everything default, right? The user, you don't have to specify username. You don't have to specify passport, password. You don't have to specify the port and the host, right? Then usually that's not the case. You don't just connect with the word MySQL. You have to specify the MySQL server host, the user, the password, and so on. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Even though the example assumes you know that, right? I don't think that's a great assumption. So let's go ahead and download it. I'm going to click on this link. It's going to take me to GitHub. Once you get to GitHub, you also have the instructions on how to load it up right here. So let me download it. You can click on this code. You can clone it if you're familiar with Git, but I'm just going to download the zip. We're going to wait for it to download. If we go to the Mac, I already did it. And let me see, I already downloaded it. So it's a zip, you unzip it and it's a bunch of files. And what they're telling us is to run this employees.sql. Let's actually open it real quick. I'm going to open it in Workbench. So this is an SQL file. So you would think you can just execute this, right? Yeah, I can just run this, but that is going to be an error. In fact, why not? Why not show you? So I'm going to execute that. It's going to run in a bunch of. It's going to run a bunch of queries, but then at the end, it's going to fail, saying source load departments that dump, right? And there is a, a line here that's actually doing that, all the source lines. The problem is this file is is located in here in the folders that we downloaded. But MySQL Workbench has no idea. MySQL Workbench does not know to go there, right? It's, it's, it doesn't know this should be relative to uh, to where this file is actually is. So it's a pass issue. That's why this doesn't work. That's why just doing it from the CLI is so much easier. So we are going to do it from the CLI. So the Windows part is running. Let's do this uh, while that is going on. Okay. So as you can see here, this is on my Mac. I don't have any employee database. Even if I refresh, uh, I don't know what, oh, look, I just ran the script. So it created it, right? So let me delete it. 
what happens is it created a database and it's executing a bunch of things and it failed in the middle. So I'm going to drop the schema, drop now, now it's gone. I don't have it. So I'm going to open my terminal. Okay, I'm going to use just terminal. Normally I use iterm, but I'm going to do terminal. So if I do which dash a my SQL, you can see I have the command. I have two of them installed. So if you're on a Mac, the easiest one is brew. Just brew install my SQL. That will or brew install my SQL client actually. It will install the client. Or you can use MAMP or you can install directly um, my SQL from the server. So it, what I want to show you is I do have the command my SQL. So, I, so in my SQL server, I'm using uh, MAMP to run it. I recommend you use MAMP because one is, one is the easiest. I have a video on how to set it up. Then I will link that also uh, with the video how to basically run my SQL. So the connection you just saw here, this is my MAMP connection. If you look at the session, it's localhost. The port is 8889. The login is root and the password is also root because I'm using MAMP. So from the command line, I'm going to connect to this database, right? So I'm going to do MySQL my sql i'm going to do dash h for host local host sometimes local host works sometimes you have to do 127001 so let's see what happens here the port in my case upper case p for port 8889 that's the one i happen to be using and the user is root and the password is also root so for the password dash p is lowercase and you don't put a space between dash p and the actual password okay normally you can even not put the password there and you can hit enter on the next step it will ask you for a password let's let's try that connection actually i'm going to hit enter it's going to ask for a password i'm going to type root and access denied for local host so let's see uh, let's do 127 I'm, i've noticed that i need to look into it point oh point oh root and now i am connected so i'm going to exit here i'm going to clear i'm going to do the same command now i'm going to put the root here so what is this telling me the instructions if we look at the instructions oh i first have to go to that to the location go to the location and run that command i'm going to do dash t and the less than sign in the employee.sql so first i have to go to that location right i'm going to control c i'm going to go to downloads where is my file it's in downloads let's look at it it's in downloads it is test db master cd test db master okay if i do ls we can see that employee.sql is here so i'm going to repeat my previous command the mysql this don't worry i'm going to repeat the same thing on windows so you're going to see it again it's slower dash p root so a dash t because they just want me to run the test less than sign and employees.sql hit enter it's going to execute a lot of scripts right well it's going to execute one script but that script calls other scripts so it's going to do a bunch of things it shouldn't take more than one minute to do this actually it's creating the server pretty much done okay let's done let's go here i'm going to click on this little thing to refresh i'm going to refresh now i have employees database let's see if there's data in there i'm going to go to the tables I'm going just going to run a query in, in um, departments. Voila, there is data here. Okay, so let's do the same exact thing on Windows. Since this is a CLI, this is going to be the same process. So on Windows, the download should be done. So let's see, it downloaded this DB, uh, test DB master. Let's uh, double click it. Actually, on Windows, I'm a Mac user, so I'm not too familiar. I don't know if I need to extract it. Okay, let's do extract. Extract to the same location. It is going to extract it. Okay, in this folder, there is the same file, the employees. Okay, so let's go to workbench. We can see it is gone. Now I'm going to open a terminal. Okay, the same thing if I do where my SQL. So on, on a Mac or Linux, it's which to find the program. In Windows, it's where. You can see I have it right here. Okay, I'm using the MAMP version. In fact, let me just use that. So first, let's go to the downloads. So I'm going, what I'm going to do is to make it easier, I'm going to copy this, this folder here, copy it. I'm going to do CD, hit enter. A lot of people run into issues when they do this because they have a space in the name of the folder. If you have a space in the name of the folder, put everything in double quotes. So you put, you put CD, double quote, you pass, close a double quote. Otherwise, if you have a space in the name, it's going to get confused because it, it thinks it's two different commands because the space is a special meaning. So a lot of people run into that issue. So I want to bring that up. 
so I hit enter i'm in that location if i do a list oh this is windows so i do dir dir i get a list of all all the folders so let me clear so now i'm going to do my sql dash host let me do the same thing 127.0.0.1 the user is root the port in this case is 3306 and my windows and i'm going to use dash t the greater is, oh i need to put a password dash p root dash t for test the greater than sign the less than sign and employees that is ql hit enter the same exact thing so literally the same exact thing i can put this command in the description uh, to make it easy for you but you do have to learn how to use this yeah you have to learn it so i'm going to put relevant videos um, in the description check them out this is all related to the cli and actually installing the mysql server itself and this command here okay i'll also put the url for where we downloaded it so you don't have to actually go search it if you if you don't want to so now if we go to workbench if we click on refresh employees database is there let's just run a query i'm going to run employees right click select voila the data is loaded we have a sample data so it's really really easy i'm i'm doing it very slowly i'm explaining it as i go uh, that is why it took a long time that's why the video is long but when you're doing it it's actually super fast and now you have a full database that you can actually practice on hopefully you enjoyed this if you do uh, if you did give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel i make videos like this all the time just helping people learn tech it um testing mostly qa automation and python related python based testing that's what i do and if you if you like my content uh, subscribe and, and hit the like button that would really help out and I will see you on the next one.